one coming through When the growth look good on you Best believe they wanna screw now I've been trying to climb Devil threw me in the dark Baby, don't be insecure You can still go make a mark like Blow. Could never let them drain my soul now Blow. Table turning like doorknobs Wow Blow. I think I'm about to set sail I'm a walking living legend Walking with my chest yeah. now Life keep dealing me cards I keep feeling in love <laughs> What's poppin' people? What's poppin' this G? We are back in the building. Guys, please make sure you smash that like button. Please make sure you share and subscribe to the damn channel. It's been a very, very good week. Um, big up to every single person who has tuned in to GTV Football Channel this week. Yes, I know this is pre-recorded, um, so I'm talking to myself, but it is what it is. We're here. We're here, we're here, we're here. Match preview, Liverpool versus Crystal Palace. Yeah, this one's, especially because it's at home, this one's going to be real interesting. It's going to be real, real interesting. Of course, we know Liverpool coming off the back of that horrendous performance against Atalanta. Absolutely horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. And Crystal Palace actually coming off a defeat to Manchester City as well. So both teams are not coming into this game off of the back of wins. I'll tell you that much. Both teams are not coming off the back of wins. So both teams would want to rectify that, right? They'd want to rectify that in this game. They'd want to get the three points if they possibly can. Crystal Palace might be looking at it thinking if we can walk away with a draw at Anfield, especially because of their last game against Atalanta, then it smiles all round, you know, if I'm being totally honest. So Liverpool have got a, not a big task because it's not like, with no disrespect to Palace, it's not like we're facing a massive team or anything like that. It's just more the raff of the other day. You know, Liverpool have been looking leggy. They've been looking tired in the last couple of games, you know, not finishing off chances and all these kind of various different things that that's kind of been going on in the last couple of games. Um, and to be honest, even some deficiencies we've seen, all, you know, during the season. So they're really going to want to rectify that, especially at home as well. Um, it's interesting, actually, that the last game that Liverpool did play was, you know, actually at home with that level of a performance. We know how in curious Liverpool have been this season. We know how, you know, flawless almost Liverpool have been, you know, this season in the Premier well, both in the Premier League and, you know, in Europe, you know, in terms of being at home. So the fact that they did lose 3-0 to Atalanta, yeah, that, that's where it becomes a little bit like, hmm. And, you know, Crystal Palace, even though even though <clears throat> they are a, a somewhat decent team, it, you know, I, I expect Liverpool to be able to, you know, bounce back. But it's going to be interesting. It is going to be super, super duper interesting. Just purely because, you know, when you look at it, when you look at it on the face of it, Ultimately, it, it depends. It depends on how the Crystal Palace manager would have set out because he's not going to be dumb. Ultimately, when you see a team go to Anfield and win 3 0 so close to your game, you're definitely going to sit there and think, maybe we try something like this too. <laughs> Do you get what I'm trying to say? Obviously, you, you don't have potentially the same quality. Well, they don't. They don't have the same quality of players, you know, as an Atalanta actually does. So that's always going to be difficult just because you see a team do something. It doesn't mean you can go out there and do that same thing, you know. So don't want to be disrespectful uh, in that kind of degree. But at the same time, you will look at it and think, hmm, you, you know what? You, you never really know. You never really know. Let, let's just wait and see, you know, as to what we can and cannot do. But obviously, we've got the game. Um, you guys can obviously, you know, you can see here, this is kind of the predicted lineup that they think would potentially, you know, happen in this game. So you've got Liverpool's lineup here. Let me just large on that up. Cool. You've got Liverpool's lineup. This is what they think Liverpool will potentially go with, which is Kelleher. Um, of course, I'll go through my uh, predicted lineup at the end of this and score prediction as well. Uh, so you've got Andrew Robertson. Uh, Van Dijk and Konate at the back with Connor Bradley. They've got slotting back in at right back. Um, Dominic Tobozolai, Wataru Endu and Alexis McAllister. And then up front, you've got Luis Diaz, Darwin Noonan and Mohamed Salah. Of course, I'll talk through my predicted lineup as to what I think. And potentially Dean Henderson in goal for Crystal Palace. Um, potentially going with a back three of Jefferson Lerma, um, Anderson and Joel Ward. Uh, four, well, four, if you want to call it a, a four or a five, Two something, whatever you want to call it. Um, Tariq Mitchell over there on the left-hand side. Will Hughes and Adam Wharton uh, signed um, just recently this January from Blackburn Rovers. 
Uh, very, very big talent. Very, very big talent. Uh, Daniel Munoz, uh, another very good player as well. Um, and then up front or in the forward line, you've got Eze, Mateta and Jordan Ayu. So, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting to see it. It's pretty interesting to see what kind of lineup they think both teams, you know, would go with. And I think, <clears throat> look, for Liverpool heading into this kind of game, when you do think about it, I think there are a few players that we look at and think, OK, I need them to step up. I need them to, you know, really step up in this game. Just because, forget even the last two, there are some players I feel, you know, in the last month or so haven't really performed to the level that I feel they need to be performing, especially when your team trying to go for the title. That's where it's bugged me a little bit is that they've not even performed at that level. So if you're not even performing at that level, you know, it's going to be difficult at the end of the day. You know, it's not just like you can just come there and roll over teams. It's just as easy as you think. So there are a few players when we're looking at it on the face of it that could be potentially difficult. So here is obviously the head-to-head. -head. Um, this is only the last three games here. I, I couldn't be bothered to put the whole however many games. We've obviously got a better record against Palace than they do against us. I know people always call it like the bogey team and stuff, but we always beat Palace, to be honest with you. So, you know, uh, I'm expecting the same again uh, this Sunday. Uh, last game, obviously, we beat them 2-1. They had a man sent off. A game before that was last season, 0-0. Um, um, and then 1-1 at our place where we had a man sent off in that game. Of course, we know how last season kind of went down. Uh, yeah, we were really, really rubbish. <laughs> really, 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 really rubbish uh, last season. When we take a look at Palace's form um, in recent weeks, you can see obviously that defeat to Manchester City. Uh, then you've got the defeat to Bournemouth, you know, uh, prior to that. Um no, sorry, they beat Bournemouth, I think, actually. I don't think they lost. I think they beat Bournemouth. Um, but you can see here, not many wins in their last few games. That's where I find it a little bit interesting because Liverpool will always be seen as some type of a scalp to anybody, to be honest with you. So this is where, listen, uh, Jurgen Klopp has spoken about he wants the team to bounce back. You know, he wants us to, you know, be able to show the Anfield crowd where we're definitely going to be putting in a performance and, you know, all of these kind of various different things. And I'm like, OK, that, that's cool. That's cool. I'm, I'm one of those, you know, put up or shut up kind of people. Um, I, yeah, I prefer not to do too much talking, so to speak, um, because, you know, you end up doing too much talking and then, when you're not really doing the business, when you need to be doing the business, that's when, you know, things just start looking a little, a little bit crazy. And yes, they did actually lose. They lost to Bournemouth 1-0 prior to that, Drew Forest. Um, so, yeah, it's been a bit crazy for them um, in general. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm more about the let's just do what we need to do kind of thing, as opposed to worrying about putting in a performance and stuff like that. Because if we were so concerned about putting in performances... Um, not even talk about last game, but all season, I don't think Liverpool put in that good of performances, to be honest with you, in the majority of the season. So, yeah, don't worry about the performance, just get the three points. <laughs> I think that's all what people are actually asking for. So, I, I, I um, screenshotted this as well, because I wanted to kind of show, like, this obviously shows here, um, obviously, how many goals we, we scored, how many goals they've scored, and both teams, how many goals they've conceded, you know, in the Premier League this season but it shows it minute in terms of where we concede our goals and what minute we kind of concede our goals so you guys can see it will be at the kind of bottom uh, where it says um the scored and conceded at the bottom with palace obviously scored 36 um, and liverpool have conceded 30 this season in the premier league if you look at the 75 to 90 minute mark, you'll actually see that's where Palace really do concede the most of their goals. Um, and then you can see in that same in that same kind of uh, metric there with Liverpool, we concede. If you look at the top, that's where we can No, Sorry, if you look at the bottom, sorry. If you look at the bottom, so just because I, even I'm reading it wrong. So at the bottom, you can see Liverpool and then it says conceded where we concede our goals, right? So we concede our highest amount of goals in, well, really from the 60th to the 90th minute, that's kind of where it is. So in between that kind of period. But if you see, if you look up at the top at Palace's one, you can see theirs is 22. They can see twin, like they've conceded 22 goals in that 75 to 73rd to 90th minute mark. A lot of goals. It's a lot of goals. And obviously Liverpool in terms of um, uh, the, the goals that they score, 
you, we do score quite a lot from that 60th to that 75th minute mark. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. It is really, really going to be interesting to see 27 goals. That's a lot of goals um, that we've scored in that time. When I think about it, yeah, it's kind of true. We do score a lot of goals, you know, from from, from those kind of minutes uh, when you when you actually deep it. Um, I think we've got, especially we've got one of the better records from that mark as well. So, yeah, it will be interesting to see. It really, really will be interesting to see what we can do. But they do score a lot of goals themselves. They score a lot of goals themselves from that 75 to 90 minute mark. They actually score more than we do. We got They got nine and we've got two. So, yeah, it's good. like I said, it will be interesting to see. And that's going to be something to be not wary about, but something just to think about is that if they're a team who can always do late surges, so to speak, just need to just just, just mind your corner. I think that's probably the best way um, for me to say it, to be honest with you. Uh, if I take a look here, if we take a look now, um, at a couple of their Palace players, um, just kind of, you know, just just to really see what they're about, if I'm being totally honest with you. So, obviously, I've got here Mateta. Um, you can see this is his heat map from this season. He's the handful. He was a handful when we played them at Selhurst Park, watched that game live. Um, yeah, he is a hand, he can be a handful anyway. He can be a handful. I don't feel he's that good, but he can be a real, real handful for defenders. And if he gets in behind, he's got a little bit of a pace about him. He's got a little bit about him as well, you know, because he's quite physically, you know, imposing when he needs to be, you know. So he is someone who, if they're just going to play long balls up to the top and you want him to just, for it to stick and all of that kind of stuff, that's where I feel like that might be their game, so to speak. But at the same time, I'm like, nah, he can... He's not really one of those, one of those. Like, he can do the tussle, tussle thing. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, he's not going to be bullied off the ball or anything like that. And you can see he likes to occupy quite a lot of the forward areas, whether it be left, down the middle, or on the right. But at the same time, I do look at it and think to myself, we should be able to, well, one of the two um, centre-backs should be able to kind of deal with him. It's more if he's going to be moving across and not just solely, you know, focusing, staying in those kind of areas. But if they can, of course get the ball out to players like Jordan Ayew. You can see here, both on the wings here, or either wing, to be honest with you. Uh, mostly more so on the right-hand side, but also on that left-hand side, you can see the areas that he kind of likes to affect the game, especially someone like Ayew, someone who's really, really experienced um, in football in a general sense. Again, he's another player I look at and I think, mm, Ayew's all right. Ayew is pretty decent. He isn't just... Uh, he's, one of, he's one of those kind of frustrating players. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's just one of those kind of frustrating players because you know it's like he has the ability, and sometimes I don't even know how he does it half the time. Like you know, fellow gone here and that. But when I watch him, he's able to just get through sometimes, and you just think, how the hell do you do that? But he's got quite good core strength. Like I think people maybe underestimate that. You know, he can he can do those things, and maybe I should give him a bit more credit because he does it more often than not, especially as he's gotten you know a little bit older. Maybe it's just one of those ones. You know, age, wisdom, and you know, all of those kind of things. But again, when I say in terms of danger, I just think he's one of those kind of players. He lurks, but he can, he's can he got the work rate, though. That's the thing you can see in the heat map there anyway, especially on that right-hand side. You can see up and down so on both flanks, but especially on that right-hand side. So our left-hand side, again, wary, but also just understand that he will be there. He will be there in most of these moments, especially because I feel like we're going to have the lion share, you know, of possession anyway. So... Yeah, just to be wary-ish. This is the guy that you you want to be a bit more wary about, in my personal opinion. A player who I've been saying that I would really like Liverpool to sign. Obviously, that was under Jurgen Klopp. Um, the, you know, whether he'd work in a new manager system, I don't really know. But he's a very, very good player, Eze. Um, likes to play off that left-hand side. Can play, obviously, attacking midfield comfortable on the ball he can carry the ball really really well he can get stuck in when he needs to get stuck in and he's a goal threat whether that be from free kicks penalties you know outside of the box he can be a bit of a danger he's one of those kind of players when he's on it and when he's at it Palace really do get playing and I think again not watch Palace too much this season so I don't want to be disingenuous to Palace just in case the new manager does have him have them playing this way. But I almost feel like he's got to be the guy the team's got to go through, if I'm being honest with you. I feel like he should be the team, like the team should be building around someone like him. Again, I don't want to say that they're not doing that if they've done that, you know, since the new manager has obviously come in. But 
that's what I'd be looking to do if I was Crystal Palace, if I'm being totally honest with you. I just think such a fantastic player. Uh, top clubs definitely going to be looking at him, you know, in the summer. Wouldn't be surprised if he were to move. And yeah, in terms of the game on Sunday, again, you've just got to be careful of players like this. And but I, I, I'm like I said, I'm so interested to see how the, the um, how Crystal Palace will play if they're going to take some, you know, some of the if they've taken notes from the Atalanta game and think maybe they can implement a little bit of that in their kind of game and then use players like your Eze's, like your Andre Ayus, you know, whoever whoever's really playing. To be honest with you see if they can use some of those qualities, you know, within their game. And if they can, listen, Eze will be an absolute danger. This is obviously Palace's uh, last game um, against Manchester City um, in terms of their average positions. You can see this is kind of how they, you know, set up in that 4-3-3, you know, kind of system. So I, I do envisage it will be quite similar against Liverpool as well. So that's why I say Liverpool... You, you know, you're almost trying to break down a, a two banks of four with this, even though I know it's supposed to be a, a four, three, a four, three, three, like a three, four, whatever. You can kind of see it's almost then turned into two banks of four. Um, and then, of course, you've got to try and get through those two banks of four, because then the number 14, for example, will then obviously, you know, drop in to into that kind of midfield area and form a five in there. And then they leave the one man, number nine, as you can see there, you can they leave him up front. And once they leave him up front, he's there, he's their kind of out ball. So that's why I believe that, you know, with Liverpool, we've seen in recent weeks not really being able to kind of think of an idea in terms of breaking some of these mid to low blocks down. We're going to have another job on our hands trying to break that mid to low block. I'm saying all of this and watch Liverpool go and win 8-0. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, that'd be funny. And that would be actually be interesting. But in, in a general sense, yeah, that's something that, you know, Liverpool are going to definitely going to, you know, just need to look out for. And last but not least, before I get into my predicted lineup, uh, these are the players who are um, out for Crystal Palace. So you've got Czech Decore, uh, Mark Gay, uh, Mateus Franca. Then you've got obviously Holding, Riches and Raksaki. So other than, I'd say, the first three, uh, Decore, Gay and Franca, um, the rest, I wouldn't say I would be. I'm like I'm necessarily worried about. Well, no, I mean none of them are playing. But in terms of those three, I think would be a big miss for Crystal Palace. So again, they're not coming into this game their strongest. Liverpool, I mean, I feel like we're coming in relatively quite strong if you think about it. You know, Diogo Jota's back. Um, Trent Alexander Arnold's back as well. Uh, Allison soon will be back, but of course, I don't. He's not going to be ready for this game. Uh, By Tetic, the same thing. Um, you know, I feel like we're, we're coming into it with players slowly coming back into the fold, if I'm being totally honest with you. So, yeah, I feel like we should be coming into this game. I wouldn't say any confidence because we haven't got any confidence, but just more so coming into this match and thinking, OK, players are coming back into the fold. Can we just really do what we need to do in order for us to get the victory? And if Klopp is saying that we are going to give you know, the Anfield faithful and everybody, you know, a nice big reaction, then let's see it, man. Let's see it, because I'm pretty sure everybody's waiting for it. Pretty, pretty sure everybody's waiting for it. So, of course, I'm recording this on Friday, by the way. So, again, I don't know if there's any news or anything, you know, possibly coming out. Um, But it is what it is, even if that means it just changes up the team and everything. So, of course, I put Kelleher and Van Dijk in the team. Um. What do you go with here? This 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 one's this one's the funny one, man. What do you go with here? Do you go as strong as people wanted him to go against um, Atalanta, knowing that we've still got to face Atalanta again at their place, coming back from three 0 um, Yeah, uh, centre back. Let's start off with the centre back area. Obviously, who's going to partner Van Dijk? Um, Kwanzaa did have a bit of a tough time against them, if I'm being honest. Um, yes, I probably. I'm kind of torn because I think to myself, yeah, just play Kanate. But again, you guys, I've said this in the recent weeks, I don't trust him. <laughs> so I do find it a little bit like, eesh, I don't really know. I'll put him there for now, for the time being, if he is going to be fit and stuff like that. I mean, he had a really, him and Van Dijk um, really did have a poor game, you know, in the last game against Atalanta. And he, looked, he just looked rusty, to be honest with you. So maybe he does need this game. Maybe he does need this type of game. Um, and to be honest, he should be able to play, you know, play on the Thursday. I mean, Sunday. I mean, Sunday, Sunday, Thursday. So you got Friday, Saturday. It's two days to then play 
play him again, then to try and play him again the following Thursday. Am I am I asking for too much? You know what? Just thinking, I'll keep him there for now. I'll keep him there for now. But my mind is thinking maybe you just play Kwanzaa in this type of game, if I'm being totally honest, because then you can save him for the return leg. But who knows? Who knows? Uh, right back. Obviously, Trent is back, to my knowledge. Trent is back. Do you start Trent in this game, though? Of course, he's been out for ages now. He's been out for a very, very long time. Um, don't want him to necessarily break down, and then we because we're going to need him. Excuse me, we're going to need him against Atalanta um, next week. And I know not to think too far ahead, but you because of the the situation that we find ourselves in, I feel like again, and I've said this before, and the managers will do this. You are thinking of the game after this, but at the same time, your focus. Your, your, your main focus at the time is obviously going to be the next game, but you will have one eye or even just casting a mind's eye, you know, at that game afterwards. So I am thinking potentially, potentially, you just put in Bradley. I'm actually thinking, oh, I'll, I'll show you guys here. Um, and then left back, um, I think you just go Robert. I think you just go Robertson. Um if he's fit and he is available and he's good to go, I think you just go Robinson from the jump. I don't really want to play Gomez there. Um, he had a, a cool, he as well had a shocker against Atalanta. Um, Simicast, no way. Uh, he was so, so poor, looked rusty and everything. Um, and I think Klopp's going to go try and go as strong as he possibly can for this game, with also within reason, within reason. Um, so in the midfield area, this is the area that I did actually find quite interesting as to who do play um, in these positions. So, Endo was, usually I put Endo in straight away, right? But, but he's been a little bit laggy himself. He has been a little bit laggy himself. Um, and I do think he does need a bit of a rest. Just even if he comes on later on in the game to, if we're winning 2-3-0, 4-0, whatever, just to kind of shore up the game, I do think he does need a bit of a rest because we play him almost at every single opportunity. At some point, he's going to look tired. He's going to look tight. He's been great this season, you know, for Liverpool. So, yeah, um, my choice was either if you did want to start Trent to put him in the DM position. But if not, I would probably just say I would just go with, for this kind of game, I would go with McAllister in that DM role. I think he's going to play Endo anyway, but I think I would go with McAllister in that DM role because you guys already know I don't like him in that DM role anyway. I really, really don't like him. So I'm actually going against the grain as it is putting him there. And it's kind of annoying me because we know he's a lot better in these kind of areas in that right um, right central midfield position as opposed to the DM role. But if you're going to give Endo a rest, I don't really trust anybody else to play in that position and like none of the youngsters like a McConnell or something. I really don't want those kind of guys to play in games like this. So I would just much prefer if you're going to play someone, just play someone who's actually played in that position. If I'm being totally honest, right. Central midfield though, I would go Harvey Elliott. It wasn't the greatest against Atalanta, but, and I know he is more effective when he does come off the bench, but at the same time, um, he, he's played well enough where I just think, OK, at some point, man, I have to trust you. <laughs> Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, if I if I can't trust you, then cool, just might as well leave. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, and he's only shown his best form off the bench. So I'm hoping that he can potentially start this game and, you know, we should be good to go. Uh, the left central midfield, I think it's going to be Zabozalai. I just think um, with the sheer fact that I know Jones started the last game, but again, he looks very, very rusty. Don't want to overwork him as of just yet. Um, so Bozalai was on the bench for the start of the Atalanta game. Um, so, yeah, I think he'll go. I, I think I, something just tells me to just go with Zabozala in that position. Um, again, he's got so much to prove. The other player I did actually think about, though, was Ryan Gravenberch. But I said I'd rather just bring Ryan Gravenberch on, if I'm being honest with you. I think Gravenberch maybe potentially like a way to then again it's a way to fulham so do i even trust him in that kind of game that's the real question um maybe i play him in this one instead in fact nah 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 grabbing but just grabbing but just about the like 
I think for now, I'll keep Zabozalai in there. Just really for his off the ball work in there. Um, and again, you bring then I'll bring you know Gravenberch on. Um, so yeah, start with Zabozalai and I'll bring Gravenberch on, you know, later on in the game. So yeah, that's my midfield. Uh the right, yeah, yeah, let's go Salah. We ain't gonna talk about it. Up front, though, I would go with this. And again, this is just more purely down to tiredness. Nunez isn't being dropped because I think he's been poor, because I thought he's been poor in other games and he hasn't really been dropped. I'm just more dropping him to the bench because I do feel like he's another one, like Endo, just looking a bit leggy. Like You look like you can't really keep the momentum going with your performances because you're so leggy. You know, I mean, you've played a lot of matches in a row, um, which is kind of disappointing to see um, because obviously, of course, you you want your main players to be able to do it. But if you've got other players in and around, it can be good. And, you know, he could potentially be a very effective off of the bench. Then on the bench, and I know people are probably thinking, ah, start Diogo Jota and Retete. Ultimately, Jota, in my opinion, shouldn't be starting any game. I mean, if you're going to start him, start him against Atalanta at least. But for now, keep him on the bench. Jota and Nunez off the bench, that might cause some type of havoc, you know, because the Palace will be panicking, you know, with that kind of bench there. And then you can still bring on your Graven Birches, your Trent Alexander aren't like a triple sub of Trent, Jota, and Nunez. I mean, come on, man. Uh, like these are the kind of things that we always keep talking about. And still, I still believe that this team is good enough. Gapo, I think, was Liverpool's best player. I feel like it'd even be kind of harsh to drop him. <laughs> Do you get what I'm trying to say? I mean, I'm not obviously. You're playing against whatever opponent and at the same time, it's not about favouritism or anything like that. I get that. And Gapo has not been good um, for a very, very long time, but he was good in the last previous game. Nunes, you can see, is getting very, very tired. So why not just play Gapo? If you've got him there, play him there. Just so that you can still give Jogo Jota that, that little bit more rest and then Jota can come on in this game and then Jota starts for the game against, Atal um, against Atalanta, in my personal opinion. But that's the front three that I'll be looking to potentially go with. Cody Gapo might then drop in as he did. If he if Gapo can play and give and bring that same intensity that he brought against um against At against Atalanta, then cool. Because you know when he's dropping into these kind of areas almost forming like a, a, a little bit of a three, you know, in there, then it gives you the license for the likes of Salah and the DS to then come off the wings and then they almost form like a two up top. Then I'm totally good with that. You know, what I mean, again, you you got the width that's going to be here provided by a Bradley, and especially provided by this guy here because he's gonna he's gonna occupy this position right here. You you already know. So these two are gonna he's gonna be almost like a, a striker anyway. I think if he plays in the game anyway, that's what I believe that Diaz is almost gonna act as the striker in the game, coming off the wings, playing in these kind of central areas um, more often than not because Robbo, if he does start, will be bombing up and down you know, this left wing. And again, if Bradley's doing the same thing, we know these. Th this is where it becomes where at times I'm a little bit like, hmm, just because at times these two, the connection between Elliot and Salah, Elliot always tries to find him, always tries to find him. So, but whereas I know that was before when he was younger and, you know, just, just one of those ones, I feel like now, bro, you've got your own kind of sense of mind on the football pitch. You know what I mean? You've got your own identity on the football pitch. So maybe you show a little bit of that and try and find some of these, you know, slide, whether it is into Salah or into a Gapo making a late run into the box for the cutback, Diaz already in there, whoever. That's the kind of areas I think that, you know, we're going to need to exploit. But yeah, guys, that is my team. So Keller in goal, the two centre-backs, Virgil van Dijk and Konate. Right back, we've got Connor Bradley. Left back, you've got Andrew Robertson. In the DM, I have gone with Alexis McAllister. Yes, I know. I don't want him there, but it is what it is. Uh, two midfielders I've gone with is Harvey Elliott and Sabozalai. Uh, Gapo up front, flanked by both Salah and Luis Diaz. Let's wait and see um, how that kind of pans out. Let's see if what kind of team that Jurgen Klopp puts out. Let's see how the guys actually perform when they do actually go out onto the pitch. Because we all know they're going to need to put in a better performance than they did against Atalanta. And they're going to really need to show everybody that, yes, we are still here. We're still in this title race, which I believe that they'll go and try and do. And then we can take it from there. And then we can then attack Atalanta however we feel we need to. Um, score prediction. Uh, I'll go with a 3-1 Liverpool. 
I'll go with a three one. I went with that same score line against Atalanta, so I'm hoping it doesn't come back to bite me. But yeah, I'll go with a three one Liverpool. Um, I think they will score at some point in time. I will be surprised if we do keep a clean sheet, but I think they will score, which what we need to sort out. I mean, it doesn't matter because you've got like seven games left, so no one really cares about conceding goals, but we do concede too many goals and we're always conceding first. I think against Atalanta, it was the 20th time this season Liverpool have conceded first in games. How many games have we even played? And that's 20 times. Definitely something that we need to sort out, man. Definitely some cannot keep going behind in games. It's just really, really bad. And I think this game is going to be really about how fast we start in the game. When we played against Palace, they started, you know, relatively well. You know, they're energetic, you know, at home, energetic, intensity, all of that kind of good stuff. We're going to need to do that. We cannot be starting slow against Crystal Palace. But yes, that's my match review done and dusted, guys. Please make sure you're smashing the like, sharing and subscribing to the damn channel. Drop your score predictions in the comments below. I'm G and I'm out, man.